Um, I wanted to um, open our meeting tonight with the account of Bartimaeus um, from Mark. I know that there was two beggars, but I want to kind of hone in on, on Bartimaeus this evening. It's going to be in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. <clears throat> and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. <clears throat> And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said to him, What wilt thou I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Amen. Um, some things about Bartimaeus, he was a beggar. Today, some people use a disability as license to um, be lazy or expect people to, to um, cater to them. But this is not how Bartimaeus was. He knew his, of his condition and how he had to depend on others for his daily needs. But he was humble in heart, and we know this because he was out begging. He was out by the highway begging, which is what he was able to do. Every day, Bartimaeus was continually reminded of his blindness, and he was forced to submit to it. It showed him no mercy, and he was powerless to change it. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to cry out for mercy. He had heard enough about Jesus that he was convinced he could help him. There was a time when we too were a lot like Bartimaeus. When we came to grips with the reality of being a sinner in need of a Savior, we too were humbled. We couldn't do much more than beg. Our nature had been corrupted by sin. And at first we were given the law to live by, and the law was good, and if we wanted to live before God, it had to be kept. In our efforts to keep the law, it continually reminded us of our sin and our shortcomings. The law was merciless, just as his blindness was to him, but we were powerless to change ourselves. When we heard of Jesus, we too cried out for mercy, and he's the only one that can give this kind of mercy. Mercy doesn't mean very much to someone that doesn't know they need it. <clears throat> However, it's a glorious thing to the, to the person who does. I was reminded of the parable of the two men <clears throat> that prayed in Luke. <clears throat> Chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. <clears throat> it says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner." I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Mm -hmm. So the Pharisee, he didn't seek mercy, and he didn't receive mercy. The publican sought mercy because he had an honest heart, and he knew the truth, and he went home justified. So by now, Bartimaeus is crying out, He's not in his normal begging stance. He's not asking ordinary people for ordinary provisions. He didn't speak to Jesus the same way he begged from others. Yeah. Bartimaeus was crying out, and some were telling him to be quiet. And this only caused him to be even more determined to be heard by the Lord. He wasn't going to allow for Jesus to pass him by due to some minor obstacles. Amen. Those people telling him to be quiet saw him as a distraction when actually they were the ones that were being a distraction. Bartimaeus was being tested, and his faith was proven strong. 
This is the nature of faith. It's tenacious. It will not be turned aside from obtaining a blessing. We remember Jacob. He wrestled with an angel all night, would not let him go until he obtained the blessing. We have this same faith. When believers perceive Christ is drawing near, we know that is not the time to remain doing our mundane routines. We stop what we're doing to seek an audience with Jesus. He recent, we, we all recently here just talked about Mary and Martha um, and how um, at a different time, Martha would have been doing the right thing. But when Jesus when the, was in the house, it was time to sit at his feet. It wasn't the right time to continue in normal activities when Jesus was there. And we want to be sensitive to the Spirit to detect when Jesus is near. Amen. Sometimes people may tell us to quiet down. They say, tune it down a notch. You don't have to be so radical. And when this happens, shout louder. <laughs> Our faith will give us the tenacity to overcome all distractions and to keep crying out to Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> we don't want to be overly concerned about what people might think of us if we don't quiet down. If we're in need of something that only Jesus can give, shout over everyone else. Amen. <clears throat> Bartimaeus' efforts were not in vain, and Jesus heard his cry. The text notes, Jesus stood still. Remember, this was a crowd of people, and Jesus gave attention to Bartimaeus, who wanted mercy. Jesus stopping for Bartimaeus wasn't a disturbance or an interruption from his work, as he was on his way to Jerusalem. He perceived Bartimaeus was part of the work. When Jesus was here on earth, he fleshed out the way the kingdom works. He only did the will of the Father, and he saw healing Barnabas as part of it. Amen. Jesus still does this. We were once blind, blind men, and when we called out to Jesus, he stood still. <clears throat> we still have areas of understanding that we, that we need Christ to open our eyes to, that we may see so that we continue. So we do continue to cry out to Jesus. Now, when he stood still, he didn't stop working either. Scripture tells us the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. So um, as I was thinking about that. We can, if he finds someone, we can assume he stops <laughs> at that person. Um, when he finds someone like Bartimaeus, he stands still. And the idea is his attention was directed toward him to accomplish a work. And if you get Jesus' attention, you will be changed. Jesus not only stood still, but then he commanded him to be called. The ones that called Barnabas tell him to be of good comfort, rise, he calleth you. Although we don't know exactly who said this to Barnabas, we can imagine that the very ones who tried to keep him quiet at yeah. least heard them calling. <clears throat> this was an apparent and public who Jesus was favoring in this large crowd. Amen. There's coming a day when Jesus is going to call us, and everyone who tried to keep us quiet will see that God loved us. Amen. Revelation 3.9 says, I will make them to come and worship at thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Amen. Amen. And he, Bartimaeus, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. Notice Bartimaeus casted off the garment before he came to Jesus. The coat was very likely one of his most um, precious possessions for him, his most important, and not easily replaceable for a blind man. But he didn't hesitate to leave it behind when Jesus called for him. Amen. Whenever the Lord calls you to leave something, he always, without fail, replaces it with something that far exceeds the former. <clears throat> what, his, what was his garment compared to his sight? The truth is also seen in the parable of the treasure hidden in the field. When it was found, he sold all he had to purchase the field because he knew it was worth far more than he had previously owned to begin with. When Jesus calls us to himself, we willingly put the, Lord, the world aside, leave it behind, and go to him. Bartimaeus left his coat in hope of receiving his sight, and we lose our lives in this world in hope of, to gain them in the next. Also notice Jesus didn't go to the blind man for this particular miracle. He had Barnabas come to Christ, to himself. 
which probably wasn't very easy for a blind man to do. Um, this reiterates the truth that whatever Jesus calls you to do, there's going to be grace to accomplish it. And it also reminds us that Jesus has already humbled himself once when he came to the earth, and he will not do it again. He is now exalted and reigning, so he's made a way for men to rise up and go to be where he is, to meet him, Amen. blind or not. <laughs> you may go to Jesus with a deficient area, but you won't leave with one. Amen. Bartimaeus comes to Jesus and asks, What will that I should do to thee? Unto thee. And Bartimaeus answers, Lord, that I might receive my sight. This was a worthy request of the master. <clears throat> His faith is what caused him to ask for the right thing. He didn't ask for temporal means to make his life of blindness more bearable. That would have been too small, and it, it would have been unworthy. He asked the Lord to give him sight. Faith rises way above what men can already do for themselves and asks for what only God can do. Amen. When we Amen. petition the Lord, we also come believing that he's able to, to grant our request. So may we learn from Bartimaeus' faith to ask only what the Lord is able to give and not think too small. Amen. Some may think it's a humble thing not to ask the Lord for too much or something that's too big. It's not humble. <clears throat> it's actually despising the Lord's provision. Jesus has sacrificed too much, and he's, done, he's doing too big of a work to only be petitioned with minor things. He is forward to deliver things such as his mercy that he showed to Bartimaeus, as well as grace to help in the time of need, strength to fight the good fight of faith, insight concerning the kingdom of God, peace that passes all understanding, wisdom to those who ask, joy in both good times and hard times, patience to endure, things that only Christ can give us, and he is pleased with such supplications. When someone has cried out to Jesus and has gotten his attention, and he stops and is looking at you wanting to know, what do you want? If you're strong in faith, you will ask something worthy of the Lord. Yes. <clears throat> it caused for me to, to examine, what am I asking the Lord? What am I petitioning? <laughs> And if he's granted my request, what am I doing with it? Mm. Bartimaeus left his coat, believing the Lord would supply his need. His need wasn't his coat, it was his sight. He didn't hold on to it anymore for extra assurance in case the eyesight thing didn't work out. <laughs> Jesus tells him, go thy way. I noticed this kind of stuck out to me, go thy way. Bartimaeus did not go back to his spot by the highway begging. <laughs> He did not go back to retrieve his garment either. He didn't go try to make a place for himself in the world, gathering up wealth and riches. He followed Jesus. Amen. He no longer lived for himself but for the Lord. His way became wherever Jesus was leading. He used this gift of his eyesight honorably unto the Lord. Whenever Jesus gives someone their sight, they glorify God when they follow Jesus in the way. We have done this. We've His will has become our own will. We want to do what the Lord um, is doing. We are in agreement with it. Uh, we've been, also in considering this account, we've been talking a lot about Babylon. And so I considered what would, have, what would Babylon have done with Bartimaeus? And I was thinking about how Bar Babylon wants to keep people at the gate begging. They want them to stay there. They say things like, we're not worthy enough to actually follow Jesus. We can't really go where he's going. We better just stay at the highway and witness to all the other beggars here. We wouldn't want them to think that we think we're better than they are. After all, after all we are all beggars saved by eyesight. And we should probably put our coats back on so that we blend in with the rest of the beggars. <laughs> While Jesus is working somewhere else, we'll stay here. And we'll give them a 12-step plan on how to receive their eyesight. It sounds silly, but we hear this all the time. Yeah, yes. And so I was refreshed in considering how Bartimaeus is a picture of the saints who are being held captive by Babylon, but receiving their sight and being able to come out. Amen. He Amen. sat by the highway begging, expecting to receive something. And beggar believers, they go to church and they, they meet in assemblies expecting to... Um, 
be able to receive what they need for life. Um, but when Jesus spots one of his own that's they're begging because they're blind still, he calls them out. And despite Babylon trying to keep them quiet, he'll call them out in front of everyone and give them their sight. Amen. And just as Bartimaeus leaves his garment, the sensitive soul leave the institution and come out and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, um, we'll have a prayer to open our meeting tonight, and Sister Debbie will come with our singing. <laughs>